On October 7th, Hamas murdered more Jews than any day since the Holocaust, and dormant anti-Semitism in America went viral. Across the country, it really looks like we've just time-traveled back to 1930s Europe with a bit more diversity and different flags. It's kind of like DEI got hold of Nazi Germany. We've seen people marching in the streets with Palestinian flags, and also Hamas flags, Hezbollah flags, ISIS flags. They've shut down cities. They've harassed, chased, and beaten Jews. They've targeted Jewish businesses, schools, and synagogues. And they've been chanting really pro-peace stuff. You know, like, kill the Jews, rape the Jews, resistance by any means necessary, intifada, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Now, what that phrase actually means is, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free of Jews. And what's the epicenter of this explosion of anti-Semitism in America? It's college campuses. But why is that? It's because too many schools and college campuses have become really hubs of indoctrination. It's because we let the left take over academia. And they're obsessed with identity politics and intersectionality and all these other nonsense buzzwords. And they can't help but look at everything through this lens. White people bad, everyone else good. And even though the vast majority of Israeli Jews are not white, and I know I'm really white, but I promise you, a lot of Jews are not white. There's brown Jews, black Jews, Asian Jews, Hispanic Jews. At this point, Joe Biden's probably going to come out of Jewish at one point just to get some poll numbers up. But it doesn't matter how diverse Jews are or how diverse Israel is. The left sees all Jews as white and Palestinians as brown, and that's all they need to know. And because they're so blinded by this racist view, they've teamed up with radical Islam. They're so stupid, they don't see how things like gays for Gaza and queers for Palestine is the same as chickens for KFC. It's all creepy fun and games if you want to get naked in front of children in San Francisco and wave around a Palestinian flag. But try doing that in Gaza. I mean, try doing that in Dearborn, Michigan. But this really bizarre partnership of radical leftism and radical Islam can only survive with three things. One, dumb and gullible, squishy liberals. Two, a ton of money. And three, a way to spread their evil ideas. And I want to focus on the third point here. They go after schools and colleges because they want to have a monopoly on what people think is true. And they're turning young people into the carriers of the virus that is anti-Semitism. And the reason anti-Semitism is exploding is because we're losing the battle on campus. And here's where you will come in, because whether you like it or not, you're at the forefront of this battle. Now, the first thing we need to understand is that young people you're going to be going to school with or going to college with or interacting with online or on the street, many of them don't share the same reality as us. So here's a good example. So pretty soon after Hamas attacked Israel, I went on a college speaking tour on why Hamas needs to be destroyed. If you have any morality at all, that's really not a hard sell. And all I did was tell the truth. I talked about what Hamas did on October 7th, how they cut babies out of their pregnant mothers, how they raped, how they mutilated, how they tortured, how they decapitated, how they burned families alive, how they dragged hundreds of men, women, children, babies, the elderly, back to Gaza as hostages. And how do I know this? Hamas and Palestinian civilians live-streamed all of it. So what happened on one campus when I listed off what Hamas did? One Palestinian woman in the crowd started screaming at me, shouting, well, what's your source? She's not talking about ketchup. She was asking where the information came from. So I said, Hamas. That's when she got really upset with me and called me a Zionist, colonizer, paid Israeli shill or something. But this one example sums up the entire problem. For some people, it will never matter how much evidence you put in front of them. It will never be enough. People still deny the Holocaust. It's not much of a surprise that many of the same people are denying a modern-day Holocaust. Again, not much of a surprise when the left is telling us that saying 2 plus 2 is 4 can be racist. They ignore the truth because when the truth comes out, they lose. But this all makes sense when you understand that anti-Semitism is just the ultimate conspiracy theory. And you are their target audience. So how do we fight back? Well, we fight back by arming ourselves 
with the truth. So they can't deny it, dismiss it, or rewrite it. And with the truth, you're going to be able to debunk all the lies they throw at you. Lies like saying that Israel is committing genocide. Now, words have meaning. The word woman means something. The word racism actually means something. And genocide also means something. Genocide means trying to wipe out an entire group of people. It doesn't mean some people on my side got hurt. And Jews defend themselves from an actual genocide really isn't genocide. But if Israel is committing genocide, turns out they're really, really bad at it. How do you explain why the population in uh, Palestinian areas has quadrupled since 1967? How is the Palestinian population growing in Gaza, growing in the West Bank, growing in Lebanon? How is it growing in Israel? Either Israel just really sucks at genocide, or it's not true. There's just one side trying to commit a genocide, and it's not Israel. Then there's the lie that Israel is just trying to kill as many civilians as they can. Again, that's exactly what Hamas are doing. You're going to notice a pattern of projection when it comes to Hamas. Israel does everything it can to reduce civilian deaths, but Hamas doesn't care if any civilians die. Not only do they not care, they want civilians to die. If Israeli civilians die, Hamas wins. If Palestinian civilians die, Hamas wins. And if not enough Palestinian civilians die, Hamas will just lie about the numbers, the media will print whatever they say, and Hamas wins again. If you care about the suffering of Palestinian civilians, and you absolutely should, then instead of just blaming Israel for defending its citizens from Hamas, why don't you ask this? Why does Hamas keep hostages in apartment buildings? Why does Hamas use hospitals as bases? Why does Hamas fire rockets from schools? Why do their leaders hide like cowards in Qatar or in bomb shelters under civilian areas? Why do they use human shields? The answer is obvious. They want as many civilian deaths as possible. Israeli deaths, Palestinian deaths, really doesn't matter. It's all a win-win for them. And that's before we point out that they abuse another word, the definition of civilian. They'll give a kid a rocket launcher, or a pregnant woman a bomb, or they'll hand a knife to a teenager to go and kill Jews. And then the second Jews defend themselves against attack, these terrorists are suddenly civilians again. Dressing like a civilian while trying to murder civilians doesn't make you a civilian. Hamas started this war. Hamas hides behind their own civilians. Hamas are the ones responsible for every civilian death. Let's move on to another slogan that's pretty popular and also a projection of what Hamas is doing again. That Israel is guilty of ethnic cleansing and that Israel is some kind of apartheid state. It's just wrong. Let's compare Israel to really any Muslim country for a second. In Israel, there were Jewish citizens, there are Arab citizens, Muslim citizens, Christian citizens, Palestinian citizens. They have equal rights. Israeli Arabs have served on the Supreme Court, in Parliament, as member of the cabinet. Israeli Arabs are overrepresented in Israel's medical system. Now, how many Arab countries have Jews in their government? How many Arab countries have Jews at all? What about the lie that the Nakba, when Palestinians claimed they were ethnically cleansed by Israel in 1948? Weird how they don't mention that the United Nations created a Jewish state and an Arab state in 1948. Israel accepted this and Arabs didn't. Arabs invaded from all sides, telling Palestinian Arabs to leave their homes until the war was over. Israel told Palestinian Arabs to stay, and those who did, guess where they are now? They're Israeli citizens. The Arabs started the war, the Arabs lost the war, and then the Arabs just blamed the Jews for everything. But losing wars has consequences. You can't just declare war and complain when you lose. Another thing they don't mention. They'll talk about the Palestinian Arabs who were displaced, and regardless of why, they were displaced. But they never talk about the hundreds of thousands of Jews who were also displaced. Hundreds of thousands of Jews were kicked out of Arab countries in 1948 onwards, even though they'd lived there for centuries. Where are the protests calling for their homes back? These idiots are happy to get in someone like my, um, people like me and get in their faces and say, go back to Poland. They'll never say, go back to Morocco, or go back to Iraq, or go back to Iran. 
Here's the real ethnic cleansing that's going on. In 1948, there are around half a million Jews in Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and Libya. There are 3,000 Jews left. That's more than 99% pushed out. In 1948, there were 300,000 Jews in Iraq, Egypt, Yemen, Aden, Syria, Lebanon, Bahrain, and Sudan. Now there's 400 Jews left. That's even more pushed out. In 1948, there were 40,000 Jews in Libya, Sudan, and Afghanistan. Now there are zero Jews there. Sounds like ethnic cleansing, doesn't it? On the subject of wars having consequences, here's another lie, that Israel is occupying Palestinian land. Now that's just wrong, wrong, wrong. There's been a non-stop Jewish presence in Israel for thousands of years, long before Islam even existed. It was also never Palestinian land to begin with. If you go back through history, you will find there was never an independent Palestinian state. Even the name Palestine was from the Romans as an insult to all the Jews they threw out. But they'll still share that graphic, I'm sure many of you have seen, of the map of Israel changing between 1948, 1967, and now, as if Israel is just taking over more and more land. They don't mention that these border changes only happen when Arabs attacked Israel and lost. Again, losing wars has consequences. After World War II, the United Nations separated the area into a Jewish state and an Arab state. Most of the Jewish land was already owned by Jews. Jews agreed to this, Arabs didn't, the Arabs evaded, and they lost. Also, Jordan occupied the West Bank and Egypt occupied the Gaza Strip after the war, but no one ever calls Jordan or Egypt occupiers, because lucky for them, they're not Jewish. Flash forward to 1967. Israel took land after the Six-Day War. In 1973, Egypt and Syria launched a surprise attack against Israel on Yom Kippur, which is the holiest day in Judaism. And even though Egypt and Syria lost, Israel still gave up land as part of a peace agreement. And in 2005, they withdrew completely from Gaza. And Gaza has been under total Hamas control ever since. When Arabs invade Israel, Israel is the occupier. When Israel gives land back to the Arabs, Israel is still the occupier. Give me a break. You want to keep your land? Stop trying to kill all the Jews. And then there's the worst projection, uh, example of projection of all, comparing Israel to Nazi Germany, saying that Gaza is like a concentration camp, even though, again, Gaza is under full Hamas control. But why do they use the phrase concentration camp? Why do they use the word Nazi? Why do they say that Netanyahu is Hitler? Why not other genocides or other dictators? It's not like we're spoiled for choice. Chairman Mao killed way more people than Hitler, so did Stalin. What about other options, like Pol Pot and Cambodia? So many options, but no, they chose Nazis. And why is that? Because that's what they see when they look in the mirror. They both wanted to eradicate all the Jews, and Palestinians were on Hitler's side during World War II. The Arab leader of then British-controlled Palestine was a huge Hitler fanboy. He collaborated with Germany and Italy during World War II. He moved to, the Germany, uh, moved to Germany, and you didn't do that during World War II for the food or the comedy. He schmoozed with Nazi leaders like Hitler and the head of the SS. And he wanted Hitler's help enacting the Holocaust once Germany won the war. In a world that sees Hitler as the ultimate bad guy, the fact that the Palestinian leader in the 1940s basically had a poster of Hitler on his wall is a pretty embarrassing truth. So what do they do? They erase it and cover it up with projection. They rewrite their own genocidal history to try and rebrand Jews as the actual Nazis. Then there's the lie of proportionality. The idea that Israel's defensive actions are somehow disproportionate and therefore wrong. You'll hear them say, but Israel has an iron dome. But Israel has bomb shelters. Well, yeah, because Israel spends its resources on defending its own citizens, while Hamas spends its resources on trying to kill Jews. It's Israel's fault that they're too good at defending themselves. It's Israel's fault that they're winning a war Hamas started. It's Israel's fault that Hamas has no interest in keeping their own people out of harm's way. But if proportionality is somehow the name of the game, what is a proportional response? Should Israel burn alive the same number of people? Should Israel rape the same number of people? 
Should Israel mutilate the same number of people? If proportionality is the goal, what's the exchange rate for 1,200 murdered Israelis? What's the exchange rate for mass rape, torture, mutilation, burning alive, kidnapping? Of course, there isn't one. Israel is fighting to destroy Hamas. Hamas is fighting to kill Jews. These fights are not the same. Israel has no duty to tie one arm behind its back to make Barack Obama feel less squishy and less squeamish about the reality of terrorism and war. And then there are countless other small lies that are pushed on us every single day. The lie that Israel is starving Gaza, wrong. Hamas is stealing all the food. The lie that Hamas is progressive now, wrong. LGBTQ, A, B, C, D, E, F, G people will be thrown off a roof if they ever went to Gaza. The lie that this is just a foreign war, wrong. Americans were murdered and taken hostage on October 7th. And then I think there's one of the kind of funniest lies, that Jews are the colonizers and Muslims are the victims. If we do some quick math, there are 1.9 billion Muslims in the world. There are around 16 million Jews. 46 countries in the world have a Muslim majority. 23 of these 46 countries have Islam as the official state religion, and they take up over 5.6 million square miles. Israel is the world's only Jewish minority country, majority country, sorry, and it takes up 8,469 square miles. It's about the size of New Jersey. There are over 100 times more Muslims in the world than Jews, and the Muslim world is over 650 times larger than the imaginary Jewish empire. But Jews are somehow the colonialists. But before I get to your questions, I want to wrap up by debunking what I think is the ultimate lie, the lie that anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitism. So Zionism is the belief that Jews have the same right as any other people to the right to self-determination in their ancestral homeland, a homeland with a 3,000-year connection with Judaism and a 1,000-year history of independent Jewish civilization. If you're anti-Zionism, then you think that Jews and only Jews do not have the self-determination rights of any other people to a homeland. It makes you an anti-Semite. If you blame Jews for the fact that there isn't a Palestinian state, when it's actually because Arabs rejected peace and chose war over and over and over again, it's because you're an anti-Semite. If you blame Jews for being attacked and defending themselves as a sovereign nation, you're an anti-Semite. In reality, none of this has anything to do with Zionism, because all people are doing is swapping out Zionist for Jew and thinking they're getting away with it. People only hate Israel because they hate Jews. They hate Israel because of the six-pointed Star of David flag, if it was a five-pointed star, no one would care. Why did millions march in solidarity with Palestinians after October 7th? But they didn't march for the Kurds, or for Uyghur Muslims in China, or against actual genocides in Sudan or Syria. No Jews, no news. Me too, except for Jews. Bring back our girls unless they're Jews. Believe all women, but not the Jewish ones. This is the double standard of anti-Semitism that guarantees that Jews will always lose. If you look at history, Jews have been too rich, too poor, too religious and not religious enough. They don't assimilate, and then they assimilate way too much. They're stateless, and they have a state. They're lazy, and they're way too successful. They're capitalists, and they're communists. And the war against Hamas is no different. Everywhere you look is a double standard. Only Jews are condemned as genocidal colonizers for defending themselves against actual genocidal colonizers. Only Jews are condemned for ethnic cleansing after being ethnically cleansed. Only Jews are expected to provide the people trying to kill them with food, water, and free internet. Only Jews are expected to live under constant rocket fire. Only Jews are expected to defend our own existence against white supremacists, radical Muslims, and moronic social media grifters. Only Jews are expected to accept victimhood. For too long, victimhood has been really our life tax, the price we pay to exist. And that's really why people hate Israel. Because of Israel, Jews have a state, a state that's a shining beacon of democracy and equality, a state full of Jews who refuse to be killed. And there's one thing bullies really hate more than Jews, and that's Jews who dare to fight back. Thank you so much for listening. I'm looking forward to taking any questions you might have.